1855, a woman by the name of Rosa Parks refuses to give up her seat for a white man. This simple act leads to a year-long boycott within the black community of Montgomery, Alabama. It's Thursday, December 1st, 1955. A black woman named Rosa Parks is waiting at a bus stop on Cleveland Avenue in Montgomery, Alabama. When the bus stops for her, she boards the bus and takes a seat in the back, where blacks are required to sit. After several other stops, the bus seats are all filled up with white people, and one white man is standing in the aisle. You back there, get up. I need those seats. Did you hear me, lady? I said get up. Are you going to move or not? No, I'm not. You must not be hearing right then, lady. Everybody knows those seats are for white folks when they're needed. You know, I'm not gonna, going to be able to let you get away with this. What would all my passengers think? There's a law about this, you know? Maybe it's time we had a law that treated people fairly. I'll let someone else worry about whatever the laws are, fair or not. Lady, I'm going to, I'm calling the police to have you arrested. You do that. This lady won't get up to give her seat to the other passengers. I told her to move, but she won't budge. to the other passengers. I told her to move, but she won't budge. Did you speak English, lady? Yes, I did. No. Did you understand what the horse driver said? Yes, I did. Then why won't you tell me? I don't think I should have to. Why do you push us around? I don't know, but the law is the law, and you're breaking the company. The police officer took Rose into a patrol car and took her to jail. She was fingerprinted and photographed, and then she was put into a cell. The friend of Rose's, Miss Pratt, had been on the bus when Rose was arrested. She ran to Rose's house to tell her husband what happened. Go, 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 Rosa didn't. What? Rosa didn't move. The bus driver had to pull the bus over and call the police. The next thing I knew, Rosa was, was on her way to jail. I'm going to need some help. Go quick, get my friend and Nixon. Tell him to meet me at jail, and quick. Where is it? Raymond and Ed paid Rose's bail and got her out of jail. When they, came, when they got home, they all discussed Rose's arrest for their public coffee. Change. We've been living with this, with this injustice for too long. I think that your arrest might be a blessing in disguise, Rosa. Why do you say that? Word about your arrest is going around town like wildfire. The people are up in arms about it. This is our chance to organize the community. How? How? I say how. How? We, we can boycott the buses. If we have to give up our seats to the white people, we shouldn't ride the buses at all. How long will the boycott last? Until they desegregate the buses. Ed, we can't change the world in one whole day. But we've got to start somewhere. Are you with me? Yes, Ed, it's time like you said. Rosa, I'm worried about your safety. You know, a lot of whites are going to be mighty mad when they hear about this. If we all unite, we can be strong and help each other go through this. Later that night, Ed planned the boycott with a new minister at the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. The new pastor's name was on the new minister. Oh. I'm not sure that's such a good idea. I've only been here for a year. The people may not have sent me as a leader. The situation is never going to be perfect. We all just have to rise from the occasion and work for the best of I can see this.
on the buses. Instead, they gathered on street corners and waited for rides from signs and cab drivers. Rosa went to court and was fined $10 for breaking the law. She refused to pay the fine that night. That night, there was an ask the meeting to decide on a future course of action. At the meeting, Reverend King was elected leader of the movement. He gave a speech that I love to fight his audience. We are here because we are American citizens, and we are determined to apply our citizenship to the police. That's right. That's right. There comes a time when people get tired of being cheerful. There comes a time like this, when people get tired of being subjected to humiliation and despair. Tell, Tell it! it. We have a long road ahead of us, brothers and sisters. Our enemies will try to bring us down into the pit of hatred. But you cannot have hatred in your heart and see justice at the same time. We must do violence with none. Show, Show us the way! way! Right here in Montgomery, when the history books are written in the future, somebody will say they lived a race of black of people, of black people, who had the moral courage to stand up for their rights. It's true. It's true! In the meantime, we must stick together and work together if we are to win our rights as Americans. The boycott will continue for what we are doing as well. What we are doing is just... God, God bless, bless you, Brother, Brother King! King. The blacks of Montgomery were determined to stand up for their rights and to challenge white power. They continued the boycott in, sp in spite of threats and attacks by racists. On December 20th, 1956, the U.S. Supreme Court finally ordered the city of Montgomery to desegregate its buses. The boycott had lasted over a year, but it had achieved its goal. Blacks no longer had to give up their seats to white passengers. Reverend King continued to fight for justice, and growing numbers of people joined him in his struggle. Rosa Parks' simple act of defiance one year earlier was the beginning of what is now called the Civil Rights Movement. The, the end. The end.